<laughs> like <laughs> hey guys welcome back to the <laughs> hey guys welcome back to the channel i'm kibikani and i'm jade and today we have a video for you which is about passing the psa so for those that don't know the psa is the prescribing safety assessment exam that all final year medical students in the uk have to do before graduation um, so we did our PSA exam on the 1st of February 2019. Yeah. Um, there are multiple different settings uh, up until I think June for your first attempt. Yeah. So we thought it would be quite good to do this now to maybe help other people in our position this year and from the years following on, just our tips and advice for how to pass the PSA. So in this video, we're not going to go into the specifics of the exam. Uh, there's quite a lot of information that you can find on their website mm -hmm. and videos that you can watch as well. Yeah. So we're going to give you some tips that we use that would that worked for us. Mm -hmm. So the pass mark for this exam is normally around 60 to 65 percent. Our exam, the pass mark was 63 percent, um, and we both got 80 plus percent. So in this video, we're going to talk about when we started preparing for this examination, the different resources we used, and how we use them. Uh, later on we're going to give you some general tips that we thought mm. could be useful for this exam mm. so starting with when to start preparing for the exam so as i said there's multiple different sittings um, and we did ours on the first of february we had done our written finals in december yeah. and i think quite a few medical schools tend to put their um, psa examination when they enter their cohort at around the same sort of time as their written finals um and obviously the first thing to say is that the psa is more of a um it's an accumulation of all of the work you've done during medical school. Like I think that's yeah. the reason it's in your final year. Yeah. It's not the type of exam where it has a set curriculum that you have to learn specifically for that exam. It's more, obviously you have to get a grip of how you do the prescribing, but it's more mm. just a general overview of like mostly pharmacology, to be honest. Yeah. And like the applications in real life that you will be doing like as a doctor. So in terms of when we officially started preparing for this exam, it was around four weeks before. Yeah. Um, I think the most work I did during those four weeks was probably the first week that I started preparing, just really trying to get to grips with what the exam was and what I was going to have to do over the next month. Yeah. And then I chipped away at it over the next couple of weeks and then stepped it up in the final week in the run up to the exam, which for us was on a Friday. So Monday, Thursday, I was mostly just doing stuff for the PSA. Yeah, and part of that was just getting used to using the BNF. Yeah. So in terms of the resources we use and how we use them. The main resources were the official PSA website, um, the Pass the PSA book and also the um, updated Top 100 Drugs book as well. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of using the official website, they've got three mocks that are an hour each. So we did one mock each week, mm -hmm. uh, made notes on the main points and then reviewed the uh, notes in the last week just before the exam. Okay, and so for the Pass the PSA book, as we mentioned before, um, this uh, covers the eight sections of the exam. Yeah. It has a bit of a description at the beginning in terms of what each section is, how to prepare for it, tips yeah. on how to approach the questions, and then it has two full um, mocks at the end. So the the way I used this was to essentially try and get through the um, explanations and the example questions on each of the eight sections as quickly as I could. Did that in the first week, and then I did each, like, the two mocks over the next two weeks. And then the last week, essentially, I just reviewed the introduction to each topic mm -hmm. and went through um, key points from the mocks that I made notes on as well. And I think we both tended to do the similar thing yeah. using this book. And I think using this in combination with the official website was really useful. And I think it was useful to have used the official website before I used this because then you knew that what you were doing to prepare was going along, along the right lines. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, all practice is good practice for the PSA essentially. And um, in terms of using this book, uh, we both used it very similarly again, in that we used it to review areas that we went mm -hmm. um, as strong on. So now we're just going to talk about some other tips that we think are useful for this exam. Mm -hmm. The biggest one being use of the BNF. Uh, so you have two choices in the exam, using the nice BNF or the medicines complete one. What I'd advise is pick one when you're practicing and just stick to it know how to use it, know how it's laid out um, and get quick at just finding different things like drug interactions and how you look those up. So another tip I would add is that um, a lot of people find it useful to have sort of two windows open so one with the BNF and one with the actual exam uh, when they're practicing and you can do that in the exam as well. Just a tip about that is that it changes the format of the BNF so just get used to using it in a different format or different layout. Yeah, if that's what you plan on doing. Um, and I think that's why it is so useful 
using it during the mocks how you're going to approach it in the exam because yeah. then essentially I found that my mocks got better as I practiced because I got more confident at what I was exactly. doing and how I was using it. So I think it's really important that before you sit the exam you kind of have a plan of attack as to how you're going to approach it. Yeah. So this exam there are 200 marks and 60 questions and you are quite tight for time you need to know how or at least have an idea as to how you want to divide your time up in it. Yeah. Um, it's also worth considering that each of the different types of questions carries a different proportion of the marks. So the prescribing is worth 40% of the marks, so 80 marks out of the 200, mm. just for the prescribing. Yeah. But eight questions out of 60 doesn't sound that many when you try and think. In a normal exam, I think you would try and be halfway by half, t half the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my plan, which I went with in the exam, was to try and be at around question 20 to 24 mm. by the end of the first hour. During the practice exams, I'd found that I was generally quicker with the second half um, of the types of questions. And I knew that obviously there was a lot of marks available for the first eight questions. Yeah. So it was important to try and get as many of those as I could. Um, but it is quite unnerving, I think, when you see the time like ticking by yeah. and you feel like you're slipping behind. I think that's another point is just to have a plan as to how you want to approach it but also be flexible and just keep an eye on the time you don't want to run that and make sure that if the original plan you had made isn't working out for you essentially you want to finish you've got more chance of passing if you attempt all of the questions yeah. it's important to finish because i had a plan as well but i quickly realized that i had to change it a little bit because i was spending more time on in the first section but that was fine because there were more marks there i think that's most of the tips that we have for during the exam yeah uh, in terms of the results they'll be published on the website they'll be under your profile tab and they'll come out two to three weeks after the exam. And one thing that's really good about the results you receive is that they give you a breakdown on how you scored on each type of question. Yeah. So those are our tips for the PSA exam. We hope you find it useful and best of yeah. luck for sitting the PSA exam. And thank you guys for watching.